Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial where we'll be looking at a GCSE exam question on vector geometry. Now this question is a little bit of a sticky one but I would certainly encourage both GCSE and A-level students to have a go at this question and see how you get on. So we're told that OAB is a triangle. OPM and APN are straight lines. M is the midpoint of AB. The vector OA is equal to A and the vector OB is equal to B. The ratio OP to PM is equal to 3 to 2 and we've been asked to work out the ratio ON to NB. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few seconds to pause the video to have an attempt at this question and when you come back I'll show you how to work out the solution. Okay. Okay, so here we have the diagram of a triangle OAB. We've been given the straight lines OPM and APN, as well as the midpoint M, which lies halfway between A and B. We've been given the vectors O to A and O to B as A and B respectively. And we've also been given the ratio OP to PM, which is equal to three to two. And we've been asked to work out the ratio ON to NB. Now assuming that you're comfortable working between fractions and ratios, if we know the fraction ON of the line OB, then we can find the ratio ON to NB. So in this question, we're going to use vector methods to find this fraction ON of the line OB, okay? So let's begin this question by labeling the diagram. So we're told that the vector OA is equal to A. So let's just add that to the diagram. We're told that the vector OB is equal to B, which we can just add here. Now we're given that M is the midpoint of AB and you can either represent this as a fraction on the diagram or as a ratio. I'm just going to stick with ratios as we have ratios in the rest of the question. And so if M is the midpoint of the line AB, it means that the ratio AM to NB would be a one to one ratio. And I just use this quotation mark to tell the reader that we're looking at ratio quantities. Okay. Next, we're given that the ratio OP to PM is three to two, which we can also add to the diagram where OP represents three of the parts and PM represents two of the parts. And we've been asked to work out the ratio ON to NB. Now the focus vector that we're going to choose in this example is the vector AN. And the first reason for this is because the fraction that we're after, ON, is determined by the line that divides OB, which happens to be the line AN. And the second reason for this is because one of the vector paths from A to N actually includes this line ON, which is the fraction of the line OB that we're after. Okay? So we're going to work out the ratio by finding different ways of expressing the focus vector AN. Okay? Now, as you saw, one of the ways we can express the vector AN is by going from AO to ON, and therefore we can use this equation. AN is equal to AO plus O to N. Since we're given that the vector OA is equal to A, it means that the vector A to O would be equal to negative A. Now, because O, N and B lie on the same straight line, we can write the vector O to N as lambda times B, where lambda represents a positive scalar multiple of the vector B. Okay. And therefore we can say that the vector A to N is equal to negative A plus lambda b, which we can write as our first vector equation. Now, since this scalar multiple, lambda, represents a fraction of the vector b, which is equivalent to the vector on, if we can find this value lambda, then we should be able to find the ratio on to nb by converting between fractions and ratios. Okay, so what we're going to do to find this value is we're going to find another way to express 
this focus vector A to N. Now, since we can see that the points A, P and N lie on the same straight line, well, it means that we can express the vector A, N as a scalar multiple of the vector AP. And therefore, we can say that A, N is equal to mu times by AP, where mu is a positive scalar multiple, and we can assume that it's different from lambda, okay? Now, in order to express this vector in terms of a and b, we need to find the vector a, p. And from the diagram, we should be able to see that a, p is equal to a, o plus o, p. Now, from earlier, we already know the vector a, o. But in order to find an expression for the vector o, p, we can use a ratio that we've drawn on the diagram to see that the line o, m is represented by five parts which comes from the sum of three and two parts, and that therefore the line OP would be equivalent to three fifths of the line OM. Okay, and as a result, AP is equal to AO plus three fifths of the vector OM. So now we need to find this vector OM, and you can see you can find OM by going from O to A, and then from A to M, and therefore the vector OM is equal to OA plus AM, okay? And so we can express OM in terms of A and B by writing that OM is equal to A, which is the vector OA plus a half B minus A, okay? And we've expressed AM as half B minus A because the vector AM is half of the vector AB since M is the midpoint of A and B, and the vector AB is equal to negative A plus B, okay, which we can write as B minus A, okay? By multiplying the brackets on the right-hand side, we get that OM is equal to A plus a half B minus a half A, and simplifying the right-hand side, we get that OM is equal to B plus A over two, okay? So now that we've found OM in terms of A and B, we can substitute equation four into equation three to get an expression for AP, giving us that AP is equal to negative A plus three fifths times B plus A over two. Expanding the brackets on the right hand side, we get that AP is equal to negative A plus three tenths B plus three tenths A and collecting the like a terms on the right hand side we get that a p is equal to three tenths b minus seven tenths a so now we have a nice simplified expression for the vector a p we can substitute equation five into equation two to get that a n is equal to three mu over ten times b minus seven mu over ten times a which we can label as equation six and since we have two expressions for the vector a n, we can set equations one and six equal to get negative a plus lambda b is equal to three mu over 10 times b minus seven mu over 10 times a. And we can now solve this equation to find lambda and mu by equating the coefficients, okay? So equating the coefficients of the vector a on the left and right hand side, we get that negative one is equal to negative seven mu over 10. And equating the coefficients of B on the left and right hand side, we get that lambda is equal to three mu over 10. So we now have a simultaneous equation with two equations and two unknowns, lambda and mu to be found, okay? And we can solve this simultaneous equation by first of all using equation seven to find mu. Okay, so we can solve equation seven by multiplying negative 10 over seven on both sides to get that mu is equal to 10 over seven. And in order to find lambda, we need to substitute this value of mu into equation eight as follows. So lambda is equal to three times by the substituted value of 10 over seven, all divided by 10, okay? Now, if you evaluate this, you'll get that lambda is equal to three over seven. Okay, so we've now found this value lambda, which represents 
the fraction on of the line OB. And this value is 3 out of 7. So if we split the line OB into 7 equal parts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, well, based on our value of lambda, ON represents 3 of the 7 parts, and therefore NB represents 4 of the remaining 7 parts. Okay, and therefore the fraction ON to NB is equal to 3 to 4. Okay, so I hope that was somewhat useful for you and that you can see that using some of the logical approaches that we learned in the previous tutorial, this question isn't too difficult. Well, anyways, keep up the good work and I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.